You got something flowing there? We have, we have something going. Anyway, uh, praise the Lord. We've been teaching on Wednesday nights called, uh, we're calling it Spiritual Guts. Hallelujah. And uh, we're still humming. What we got humming up here? Something's kind of like doing. Anyway, we'll get it. I'll let y'all find it here in a minute. Somebody. <laughs> or kind of like a. Anyway, praise the Lord. So what are we talking about? Spiritual guts. <laughs> anyway, so and thinking about the title, Spiritual Guts, today, I was thinking more like, you know, really a, a little side thought would be uh, kingdom substance. Kingdom substance. Everybody say kingdom substance. So um, we're going to continue. If you haven't heard the previous couple of messages, uh, those are available on the website or go to the YouTube page, and uh, we're kind of we're, we're building, and we'll pick up a little bit where we left off last week, but I want to I come back on something. So this is our main text, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, and we're talking about that kingdom substance, talking about spiritual guts from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, so we're talking about the kingdom, remember say the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, how many know that's a real place, kingdom of heaven will actually one day be operating on this planet, and uh, Jesus will be ruling and reigning, and we'll be ruling and reigning with him, but in the meantime, uh, there are principles of the kingdom, Jesus said what, listen now, you can't see it. In the natural, but he said, Jesus said, Matthew 6, 33, seek first, what? The kingdom and God's right way of doing things and all these things will be added. And there's parables of the kingdom. Jesus gave us parables. So, so it's good to kind of think these thoughts. And as we're, we're not just giving you something to, oh, well, that's a nice little message. I mean, if you ever come here, you think, oh, well, that was just a nice message, but you don't go home. And now, how can I apply that? What can I do with that? Does this work? How, how, how do I get this working in my life? Um, so. He said, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. Now, from the days of, because John the Baptist, um, we remember when he was called, uh, he went out, he was out in the wilderness, you know, eating locusts, and, and uh, he was preaching out in the wilderness, and people were coming out, and he's preaching the kingdom. So, from the days of John the Baptist, he began preaching the kingdom, and that there was somebody coming, and he was actually the forerunner. The Bible tells us he was the forerunner for Christ, and he was uh, trying to make the crooked way straight. And that's what the church is. That's what we're doing today. We're, we're making the crooked road straight and, and proclaiming the, there's somebody coming. But so he says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, up to this present time, and even now the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. Everybody say forceful men, forceful women. Hallelujah. Uh, they lay hold of. Now, what is it they're laying hold of? We're laying hold of the kingdom. Laying hold of kingdom things, kingdom principles, and so there's also a substance that we need to make sure that we lay hold of, and that substance is on the inside of us. The Passion Translation says the, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth. Amen. I mean, you can watch the news, and you'll think nothing, nothing about the kingdom is happening, but there's a lot of good stuff that's happening. Uh, we know there's angels and, that are working. So the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth, and I like this, passionate people have taken hold of its power. Passionate people, praise God. I mean, so that's, a, that's somebody who, a passionate person is just simply someone who gets excited about what they have. <laughs> so we need to get excited about the one who's in us, amen. And so again, we've said there's two kingdoms, right? I mean, just to back up a minute, there's two kingdoms operating in this earth. Jesus said, remember, he, one of the things when he taught the disciples, when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, and he said, the first thing he said was, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be your names. That's a good way to start out praying. I just pray the names of God. Sometimes when I'm just praying, that's a good pattern for prayer. And so I just start thinking, I just start praising God for all of his names, all the different names of God. Hallowed be your name. And I just go through names of God, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Thank you, Lord. You're my healer. So it's just a pattern. But he said, pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that tells us there are things that heaven has that God wants happening in the earth. You know, I really, if you read the Old Testament, I believe, I mean, you know, uh, and you take it over into, when you talk about prosperity, or I don't like to use that word really because people run off and think that's just money, or, but, but when you talk about abundance, in the Old Testament, God said if you'll obey him, God's whole purpose in bringing them to the land, he said that your days would be as days of heaven upon the earth. That's a Deuteronomy. 
If I say days of heaven on the earth. So I'm convinced that if we'll operate in God's best and God's highest and, and fill our minds with the word and fill our thoughts with the word and do the best we can to renew and, and, and pursue those things, we can have days of heaven on the earth. Can, hey, can you get excited about that? So, so praise God. So there's two kingdoms. So Jesus talked about the kingdom praying. So we're to pray and, and enforce certain things. And, and really the way we enforce is doing the will of God. So when his will is done, God's kingdom is advancing. God's will being done in our life, individually, corporately, his will done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's when people get healed. It's the will of God because there's nobody sick in heaven. God wants people healthy on this earth. Hallelujah. So there's, but there's also the kingdom of darkness operating, obviously, on the planet. And because when we get born again, Colossians says we're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So the devil operates, is a, you could say he's the head of his kingdom, and it's a kingdom of darkness. And he rules, and there's different principalities and powers. We've talked about that. So again, those two forces are in operation. And the one that really is, a, you can see which one is really advancing. And sometimes, you know, the one, it's, it's interesting. I mean, just look at our, our nation right now. If you watch a little bit of news, you can see the darkness is advancing in certain states, and God is advancing in other states. Call it what you want, but there's a mindset and there's a thought, and, it's, and, it, and it just simply brings destruction. And socialism is total, total darkness. You understand that? It leads people to poverty, and it's, and it's, 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 it's anyway, I better not even go that direction. So, but here's the bottom line. When, when, that, when the kingdom of darkness is advancing, then the enemy's kingdom is moving forward. So I said all that to say we have to learn to... According to this scripture, outviolent the devil. The devil's very violent when it comes to wickedness and destruction. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we have to learn to outviolent the devil. And it starts with making sure that he's not moving in our lives. He's not operating in our homes. He, 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 he can't have our kids. Praise the Lord. He, he can't, I mean, we, you could tell you, he can't, really, he's not supposed to have our city. As long as we're here in our field, in our realm, in our sphere, in the sphere of influence that God gives us, he is not allowed to operate. We have authority, and we spend some time talking about that. And so, but how are we going to outviolent the devil? Well, we, we do it with faith. We do it with the anointing. We do it with the blood of Jesus. We do it with uh, our identity, learning who we are. I'll mention something about that tonight. Just really, that, those, these things, are you get revelation in these areas. But who, who am I? Who am I in Christ and the authority that we have in Christ? And so, so those, that's how we begin to do it. And I'm talking about the Spirit of God rising up on the inside of us to where we do something. Hallelujah. Maybe you've heard, you know, the, the, the church is really not a pleasure boat. It's a, it's a, it's a warship. I mean, we, yeah, we're a place where, where people can come in and, and, and get nurtured and blessed. But, but, hey, we're not supposed to stay defeated and, and beat down. We're to, we're, to, we're to go out. Amen. We're, we're to heal and restore. And so I, th I think sometimes too many Christians just kind of treat the, treat the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God like a jack-in-the-box. You know, in other words, we, you know, we're all right in church, and, but, you know, we don't want to be too crazy. No, Holy Spirit, we, you know, we, you just, just stay calm, you know, when, uh, when we ought to just be full all the time. Uh, I think about the kingdom. There's no secret agents in the kingdom of God. <laughs> no, no secret agents. Ain't no 007, uh, you know, no secret agents. We're you either for him, Jesus said, you either for me or against me. All right, and, and we're not shy about it, amen? I mean, the Bible does call us ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, so we can't hide uh, who we're representing at a certain time or a certain place. And I think a lot of people sometimes, well, depending on who they're around or what's going on, well, you know, we're going to just tone, Holy Spirit, we're just going to tone it down a little bit. We don't want to offend anybody. Well, now, sometimes you need to offend somebody. Uh, I mean, I don't mind just, you know, sometimes if, if, if there's some language going on in certain places, I don't mind just saying, hallelujah, <laughs> praise Jesus, amen. amen, I ain't scared, they'll be like, oh, okay, oh yeah, that's that pastor, yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. but, but we, we need to carry a presence with us everywhere we go and, and not just to keep him in here and there, but let him out all the time. Because if we don't, the enemy's going to intimidate us. And that's what he wants. He, you know, he wants us to stay intimidated and, and uh, shy. Or, but but we're, to, we're, to, we're to 
We're to use the kingdom force within us. And, and that's what Jesus did. Jesus, think about Jesus as the example. We know where he came from. But there's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit that is to be on the believer's life. And, and that's we, what we, we've been talking really the last couple of weeks uh, is the spirit of might. Everybody say the spirit of might. So let me just remind you. Let's just remind ourselves of a few of these scriptures. This is Colossians chapter 1. Verse 9, if you have your Bibles, you ought, to, you ought to learn to memorize these so you can pray them. Because these are scripture, uh, these are Holy Spirit inspired prayers. Colossians 1 9 says, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will. See, that's, you want to pray for that. You want to pray that. Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Notice, in all spiritual wisdom, number one, and understanding, number two. So that I might walk in a manner, and you personalize it, that I might walk in a manner worthy of him, pleasing him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, ever increasing in the knowledge of God. And then verse 11, notice this, strengthened, everybody say strengthened, with all power. Man, do we need to be strengthened with power? Yes, we do. This is a spiritual, heavenly substance, spirit of might, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. So it comes from God. It's something that he wants us to have. He wants us to walk in. Then if you go over to Ephesians chapter 3, that's another prayer that Paul's praying. And he said that, we, that God would grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in our inner man. So when you talk about a kingdom connection, that is your inner man. The flesh that we have, this outer, it's just, what, it's just the earth suit that we have to have to operate here on this planet. But the real us, the spirit man on the inside, and actually, Proverbs talks about the strong spirit of a man will sustain you in bodily weakness or trial. So you want to keep your spirit man strong, spirit man built up. That's called the word and prayer, and church, and just, you know, growing and developing. And so those are important things. But the King James Version of Ephesians 3.16 says to be strengthened with might. I like that word might. Remember, we were talking about, you know, uh, might at the end of the service. I was thinking, oh, man, I, I, David danced with what? All of his might. I mean, we were talking about worship kind of at the end. Just whatever we're doing, we, we can put some might into it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not really being, being lazy about it, but strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So the New Living Translation says, I pray. Now, again, when we're talking about this is something that we pray and ask God for. God's not just going to make stuff happen automatically. But he said, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources. I like the Holy Spirit. From his unlimited resources, he will give you might or mighty inner strength through the Holy Spirit. So where does it come from? Now, we've got the Holy Spirit in us, but Holy Spirit is in us to, to work with us and to help us and to strengthen us. But that strength there, notice that he would give us mighty inner strength through the Holy Spirit. Well, how are you going to get that if you don't hang out, hang out with the Holy Spirit? Or actually acknowledge that he's in you. Do you talk to him? Do you say, thank you, Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. That he, you're my standby. I mean, Jesus talked about the paraclete, the comforter, the helper, the standby. Praise the Lord. We're going we're gonna to get into more a little bit about that. But, but the Holy Spirit is in us to strengthen us and to help us in God. But we have to ask for that. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, we mentioned uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. And I, I'm, I personalize that prayer because I pray it. I need it. Talked about the Spirit upon Jesus. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Talking about Jesus, referring to one to come. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Hallelujah. What is that? The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. The Spirit of counsel and might. So there it is, right there again. Counsel and might. What do you do with might? Well, Samson, I mean, he had, I mean, he had a special anointing, right? But he had enough might. Think about what Samson did. He killed, what, a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey? I mean, come on, that's, that's, that would be spiritual might. Because, I mean, just a normal man is not going to be able to do that with a jawbone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you'd think at least a few guys would be able to attack him before he got, you know, he could whip everybody. But that's that spiritual might or, or that anointing. And so, that same spirit... There was someone, Jesus is upon us, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and strength, might or strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So those are all things that, again, but notice that word might is in there. And so that might, another word we could use is the force. There's a force 
in us that God wants to bring forth because the kingdom of heaven, how does it advance? Forcefully. Forcefully. We have to see it like that. How's the enemy advancing? Forcefully. Well, how are we, how's God, how, number one, our, really, I mean, the way, how do we, the, the first step to advancing is praying. That's what Jesus said, pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, so prayer is, you see, really, prayer is a, a lot of this. Prayer, prayer gets, because it's not by might or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So I, that's the first thing we want to get going. But anyway, but there's an understanding in this knowing. Uh, there's a revelation here, a reality that I've got something, I've got a greater substance on the inside of me. And I'm going to come, and I, I think you, we'll get everybody happy here in just a minute. If you can't get happy tonight, uh, I might have to come out and slap somebody. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 3.20, we said what? Now God is able, God is able what? To do. Now watch this now, exceedingly, abundantly, everybody say abundantly. How does God like to do things? He likes to do things abundantly. Above, over and above, all that we could ask or even think. Now notice, according to what? The power that's working in us. So that means we need to get something activated that's already in us and get it working. Paul talked about telling told Timothy, stir up the gift of God on the inside. So things that he would do and praying, stirring up things. So you can do that singing and praying. Praise the Lord. And so we should be affecting really everything around us because there's something working in us. So let's take this step. Let's go a little deeper down. All right, that, that'll, that'll catch you up if you weren't here. All right, now Romans chapter 5. Here we go. Romans 5, 17. Watch this. Are you ready for this? Romans 5, 17. It's a lot of good stuff in Romans. Romans 5, 17 says, For by the, by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive. They should referring to us now. If you've been born again, you've asked God into your heart. Those who receive, everything from heaven, everything from the kingdom, everything from God is received. Everybody say received. See, faith is a receiver. So once you ask, well, let me say it like this. Let me back up. The greatest way to learn to receive is humility. Remember, Jesus even referred, referring to himself said, he said, come unto me, all you that we, weary, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke, learn from me, because I'm meek and humble. Learn from me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So James said, receive how? With humility, meekness. The engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. So humility is a main key in receiving, by the way. That's a whole other thing in, a, in helping your faith area. So, though we're talking about receiving, he said those who receive, now watch this, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign. Everybody say reign. Reigning is a, is a, is a dominating term. It is a ruling term. Ruling and reigning. So those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, because righteousness qualifies us to now reign in place with Christ, because we're joint heirs with him. So those who receive the abundance of, and there's always more grace, abundance of grace, and the gift. So it's kind of like grace. Grace is a gift, but there's a whole lot of it. But righteousness, you are. You can't become more righteous. Let me understand what I'm saying. You can't become more righteous. You, you are righteous. You, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So now we walk in the righteousness. But those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall, what's this now, reign in life. The word life there is not just living life. That's the Greek word zoe. So that's the God kind of life. So those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in zoe. Everybody say, I reign in the God kind of life. So that means, that means I'm, that's, that's something I need to learn how to operate in and learn reigning in the Zoe of God because that is the life. Of, Zoe means the life of God. It's the life of God. So I reign, actually I rule and I reign in the life of God. Everybody say, I reign through the life of God. So notice, let's finish this scripture. We'll reign in life through, reign in the Zoe of God through one Jesus Christ. So, in other words, He's the head. So we're this, this. This is not separate from Him. So we're reigning in the Zoe of God that, that we've been given. We've been given the Zoe, the life of God. But it, that life is what it's light. It's a substance. So really, you can't separate it from this substance of of heaven, this kingdom substance that actually can expand. 
you get more of it. You can, uh, when you're feeling weak, you can get a dose of it. It's tangible. It's anointing. So we're not really just, uh, but, but for, for subject purposes of what we're talking about, it's a force. It's a strength in you that Paul said, I need more of it. Lord, I need more. I need more of this inner strength and to help me to live and to do what you've called me to do. But here's the thing. As I was thinking about this, Jesus, if you think about Jesus, Jesus didn't rule because of a natural position. Did he? No. He ruled how? In the spirit. Or again, using this life, he was life. But he didn't, he didn't come to heaven. He didn't come from heaven, come to earth to, to get a position. He already had a position, right? So as I was thinking about this today, man, I just, I got, I got so stirred up. I, I, I was thinking about this because you can take this so many different directions. You're talking about the kingdom. Jesus, remember in John chapter 18 when he was talking to Pilate? And, uh, and, and basically Jesus told Pilate, he said, my kingdom is not of this, wor- of not of, if not of this realm. It's not of this world. He said, if it was, I would already have, my, my, my army would already been fighting for me and you would be toasted, toast, post toasties right here. Right? So think about that. So when G- Jesus is here, he's a man anointed by God. He's operating in the principles of God, doing what God says to do. But he said, basically, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Now watch this. Then I was thinking, okay, John chapter 17, verse 14, Jesus is praying. Everybody say, he's praying. Remember in the garden, the night before he goes to the cross, he's praying before they, right before they come and get him, and he's praying for his disciples. It's an amazing prayer. There's so much revelation in it. But in, 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 in John 17, 14 there, he said this. He said, now, Father, I, he said, I've given, he's talking about the disciples. Now watch this. He says, I've given them your word, and the world hates them because they are not of the world as I am not of the world. Now, I just kind of had to meditate on that for about 20 minutes. I want, you to, I want you to just think about it, because we're talking about something that's in us. We're here not just to, you know, go through life, get a little retirement, you know. And, no, it's more than that. But Jesus said, I've given them your word, and the world, well, actually, when I, was, I got to meditate on it so much, I got fired up. I had to make me a Facebook post, because I'm thinking about, okay, if I'm not of this world... I ain't supposed to be living like this world. So I just kind of, I kind of made this comment. I said, I said, uh, if you're hanging around with people of the world and, and, and you don't make them comfortable, then you're, you're, you're not doing anything to affect their state of sin or their, 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 their lifestyle. And, and so you must be too much like them. Something like that. It's kind of, just kind of, I just wrote it as it came out. Hallelujah. Because I was thinking about that. Because are we of this world or not? Come on, think about this. I mean, this is revelation, right? If you really think about it, Jesus said, you're born again. This world is not, does not belong. To, we're not of this world. Now, we're in it, and we're to affect it. We're to change it, but we're not of it. Same thing Jesus said, I'm not of this world. If I was of this world, I, the angels would already be fighting for me. And if I wanted to, I could call them right now. But my kingdom is not of this world. But he said to the disciples, they're not of this world, like I'm not of this world. So he, they're, they're, he's already, he's, so they're no different. The disciples are no different from us, right? So if we're not of this world, then we've got a substance that's out of this world while we're on this world, and we're just kind of like wondering what to do with it or how to operate in it or should I, do, should I? So, hallelujah. So I just said all that. Jesus, he, he, didn't, he didn't rule thing. He didn't rule from a natural position. And so we don't control things here on this planet. Now, think about this. We don't control things here from a natural position. You know, if if your kids are dealing with stuff, our kids sometimes would come home from school, and we would take authority over the devil. We would pray for the teacher. We would pray for certain people or whatever was involved, and we would would shut it down. We'd plead the blood of Jesus. We'd bind the devil, loose angels. We were talking about that recently. But it's because we're not operating from a natural position position on this planet. We, we control things, the atmosphere of our home, our surroundings, because of where we walk in the Spirit. How I many know we walk in the Spirit? 
Now, that's not, that doesn't mean you walk around with your eyeballs and around, rolling around in the back of your head, walking in the Spirit. No, walking in the Spirit, you're walking according to the Word. We're, we're doing, doing what, how Jesus would do it. So you can have a natural position and have no control over the Spirit. And have, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Have no control. If you're not born again. Or, or you could actually, you, you know, you could just kind of be sitting not using what you have. You, could, you cannot, you, you know, you have to use your authority. And so, the reason, the reason that we can rule and reign in life through Christ in Lubbock, Texas, is because we have a place of domination in the spirit realm. That's called, Ephesians 2 calls it, we're seated in heavenly places with Christ, right? I mean, there's some authority right there. We're, we're, we're praying from a, a seat of authority, a place of victory. And so you have to rule and reign in the Spirit. You get things done in the Spirit. It's called praying about it instead of getting in the flesh. That's why Paul said over in Ephesians 6, we looked at it, our battle is not against flesh and blood. That means sometimes we get over, we're trying to deal with things and, or try to figure it out with our head when we should just get over and just relax and pray in the Holy Spirit and thank the Holy Spirit for showing us and helping us to see what we need to see. Amen. But we don't do it through carnal means. That's what I want you to see. Hallelujah. It's, it's, called, it's called knowing who you are. Praise the Lord. I'll give you a little testimony. What I mean, and I'm talking about this force. Because we have this land over here, and it's right next to some residential area. Well, January, we had a couple of days. It had some high winds, and, and so uh, one, of the, one of the neighbors was really just wearing my, my phone out, texting me pictures and tumbleweeds and dirt's blowing, and we can't breathe. And Anyway, so I, I was having to stay in love, you know, because we have a farmer that takes care of it, and, and, but he, don't, he only responds when he wants to. And, uh, and, and so, you know, I text him, and I'm calling, and I got Lori calling him, and, I was, and he's just not, res- and usually mid-January he comes around, and, and we kind of, you know, know what he's doing, and what, I mean, February, and so February's rolling around, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and so the other day, I, I drove over, last week, this was last Wednesday, so, so probably, I think it was, it was either Tuesday or Wednesday, I drove over there, I think it was Wednesday, and I kind of parked on the north side, and I'm looking at the land, and I just, I was like, Lord, because I was really saying, yeah, this, this needs, the dirt needs to be turned, you know, has, you know, keep, the, you know keep the sand down, and, and it, and it can, kind of dry, and um, I just said, Lord, I need some help here, because I'm, I'm, I got, you know, they're wearing me out over here, and, and it, it's kind of out of my control at the moment, you know, I got the farmer, and I'm waiting on him, and I need to know what to do, and, and you know, and, and I, don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get in trouble, you know, we just need to take care of this thing, so, so I bind you, devil. And I look, minister and angels, go, get this, get this farmer moving. I need some help here, angelic assistance. After service last Wednesday night, the farmer texted me. I got the text. When, after, right after service, when it, I saw somebody text me, and it was the farmer, and he said, hey, I'll be going over. He said, oh, sorry about that. I'll be going over there tonight, and I'll get it all till tonight. I mean, he had, he had that whole 63 acres done by in the morning time. Hallelujah. And then it rained right after he did that. And then it rained again just before we had that bad wind. But praise the Lord. And they were still on me yesterday. I'm like, come on, I can't control 45 mile an hour of dirt. Give me a break. Well, thank you for it. I said, yeah, I'll be. I said, I'll try to build something as soon as I can. Anyway. But thank God for the minister and angels. So, so that's what I mean. So, I, you know, I didn't have to get all mad and get all fussy with him. Well, leave me alone, blah, blah, you know. I'm like, I'm going to stay in love, stay calm, stay cool. Proverbs says a cool spirit, understanding, you know, just stay calm. Amen. But how would I do with it? How did I deal with it? Spiritually. And it happened. I mean, you know, look, I mean, a little quicker than I thought. I mean, I'm like, okay, tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So. This is what I'm talking about, doing things not through the carnal means, but, but through the spiritual means. And, and this is how we move beyond, really, our comfort zones, because really, when we're moving in the spirit, and that spirit of might kicks in on you, you really don't have a comfort zone. You just, you just flow it, amen? And so the spirit of might, everybody say the spirit of might, it's a force that comes alive on the inside of you, and it affects every area of your life. What do you mean every area? Well, I'm talking about social life, private life, business life, ministry, family, marriage, your kids. It's a power 
power. Everybody say power. You know, when I say, faith is relief. There's power in our words. Life and death is in the what? Power of your tongue. Think about that. So how are we going to release some power? Well, faith. The force of faith. So the results are, you know, when you get this stuff going, instead of complacently dealing with things, you, you blast it. That's really what I mean. You just, you just got to blast some stuff sometimes. You may know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's like, it's like when the devil attacks you, you just start slinging the blood. Blast some stuff. Hallelujah. Some of you need to just blast some things. Even the, I, I, I get so mad sometimes, I think about lack. You need to just blast lack. You need to get all over it like a chicken on a June bug. Say, I am not going to have any lack. I am not going to do without. I have a God of abundance. And I mean, you get busy on that. And you, and you deal with it. You just deal with some stuff. And some of you need to go home tonight and just say, out in Jesus' name. Out. And, you know, you, amen. I refuse to allow you to eat dinner with me anymore. I mean, you got to kick strife out. You got to kick some stuff out. You got to rebuke it. Bad habits, whatever, attitude, just get rid of it. Say, uh-uh, I ain't, I ain't saying no more. Hallelujah. You got to carry something home with you. And I'm not talking about going home and acting like a weirdo. You know, there's times over in, the, in, in our history, I mean, we probably did a little bit more, maybe not as frequent now, but, but when you're younger, there's certain places, I don't know, we, we would take oil, we'd anoint our house, we'd anoint our whole house with oil. If we moved into a brand new house and somebody lived there before, we would anoint the house. We'd go through, I, I slap that, I slap every, we go in every room, going in, going out, and we would, we'd pray over the whole house and we'd say, devil, is any devils here? You cannot stay, this is my house. And we would just speak the peace of God. I mean, you, you, you might not try it. I just I pray over the whole house. You can do it. You got the Spirit of God on the inside of you. And I've had people say, "Would you come pray over and anoint our house?" I said, "Sure, I'd be glad to." But you could do it too. Save me a trip. <laughs> you just know how to pray. Tell the devil, huh? It ain't your place no more. I anoint this. The oil represents the whole. I say this oil represents the Holy Spirit, and we just anoint this house, every room, bathroom, closet. And we've had to, we had a house one time we lived in, we had, we, had a, we had Indians that owned the house before, and they actually had a little closet. I'm just, this is true. They had a little closet that was their little shrine. And, 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 and demons would try to come. They would try to come back because sometimes they'd mess with our kids. They really did. Sometimes our kids would scream in the middle of the night, nightmares. Or they would just wait. I mean, just holler and scream. They had some crazy stuff. And I would have to take authority over the devil and say, this is our house. You are not staying here. You cannot, this is my house, and you have to, because what, that, that's, they just come and, mess, sometimes they just come into attack, coming to mess with you, but, and, and that, that closet still, that probably still smells like their little incense, you know, it just get all in the paint and stuff, you know, see, you just need to, you just need to clean the whole thing, you know, but yeah, I mean, praise the Lord, take authority over the devil. And sometimes you just shout a little bit and say, "Uh uh-uh, that's done, and just praise the Lord, and the whole atmosphere will change. Praise God. Some some people just need to stop sleeping with the enemy, period, you know, and that helped a whole lot right there. Anyway, moving right along. Maybe that's somebody online. (laughs) Hallelujah. We do. Sometimes we just go to bed with the enemy, just mad, going to bed mad, just sleeping with the enemy. Okay. All right. All right. And a lot of people don't walk with the spirit of might because they, they just don't know about it. That's why we're preaching about it. They don't know about it, and they didn't ask for it, and, and some don't want it because it requires things. God re- God's going to require some things. It ta- it's, it's time for us to accept some spiritual responsibility. Amen? So, like, you say, what do you mean? It's spiritual response. Ephesians 6.10. What does that say? Be strong in the Lord. How long did I go? And in the power of His might. His might. Everybody say His might. His might. Be strong in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, and in the power. Notice he uses that word might again, his might. That means God's got a power, a substance that we can have that helps us whip every devil, whip any problem, any situation, any circumstance. Hallelujah. And you cannot be strong in the Lord if you're not strong in what you believe. Catch that? So you need to believe in the power of the blood. 
You need to believe in the power of the spoken word, the power of God working in you and through you. And you believe when I, what Jesus said, you have what you say. I believe that. I said, I believe that. If Jesus said my, the power in my words that I can have what I say, and if I don't doubt in my heart but believe those things what I say will come to pass, I'll have what I say. Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll make you happy. Be strong in the fact that Jesus still heals today. He still heals. Be strong. You know, there's, there's no such thing as optional faith. You know what I mean by optional faith? No such thing as optional faith. If, if you can't get beyond the rollades and the aspirin, you better pray that God, you know, you don't get something serious. Okay. I mean, nothing wrong with rollades, but I mean, I mean, you ever been into Walgreens? You, they, they sell that stuff in 25-pound bottles. I mean, you got to be a weightlifter to carry it out of there. But you use your faith. Because, see, we have, uh, Americans can get lazy faith. Because why? We have a lot of options. Lots of options. We get lazy with our faith. Too many options. Oh, and I like options. I mean, praise I like I, I like options. I, I like, oh, you know. Anybody not like options? You like options? But, but when it comes to your faith, your faith comes first. You don't want to, I mean, in other words, you want to be led. Nothing wrong with doctors. Nothing wrong with medicine. Praise God. I'm not knocking any of that. But number one, what does God say about it? And you follow what's on the inside. You follow peace. And you be led. And because the Lord can be leading you a totally different direction, then, I mean, Take an aspirin and believe, you go, believe you're getting better, but, but try, try just some faith first. Amen or both. I mean, the deal is get well, right? But use your faith on those different things and, and quit exercising your options and what he say, be strong in the Lord. See, that's the, if you're strong in the Lord, you'll start exercising your faith on some things and you might not need some of the other things, some of those other options. Hallelujah. Because if you're not strong in the Lord, you're, you're deceiving yourself. You got to be strong in the Lord. That's what he said. And, and you're not strong in the Lord if you're not strong in what you believe. Woo. So you see a lot of Christians are, well, I, well, they, well, I think I believe that. Well, I believe that. Well, really. But you really only do what you believe. <laughs> That's really what it boils down to. Are you doing it? Hallelujah. The days of optional faith are gone. I mean, you just it never was really there. But to be strong in what you believe, that's so far away from so many because they say they believe, but they, but they don't exercise it. They're not doing it. So, so God wants the body of Christ to be strong because you carry a force. We carry a force on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Let me, let me give you, can I give you, just give me 10 more minutes, right? Y'all don't have nothing else to do, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Think about this. Everybody gets tired, right? We all get tired. Everybody gets tired. I mean, we get weak and we get tired. We get frustrated sometimes. You know, there's kids, there's jobs, there's pressures, different things that are going on. And, and sometimes you just want to give up or, or we, could, we could just call those our limitations. We all have some limitations. What does the Bible say about our limitations or when we're dealing with tiredness? Well, anybody ever read Isaiah chapter 40? Because this fits right with what we're talking about. Isaiah chapter 40, listen, verse 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives what? Strength. wonder what kind of strength that is. You think that might be the same might and strength that we've been talking about? He gives strength to who? The weary and to him who lacks might. He increases power. Hello? I mean, that's a double whammy right there. He gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might, he increases power. So there's something here. He says, though the youth grow weary and tired, vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait on the Lord. See, see there's, there's, there's a deal right there. Those who wait on the Lord, what's going to happen? They're going to gain new strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not get tired. They'll walk and not become weary. I've never been burnt out in ministry. I'm like, man, really? I've never, I, I, I mean... I get, I, you know, I've hit some places where I'm, I might be frustrated, maybe overwhelmed at times, but I've never been to a point where I was just, I'm just burnt out and I'm, I'm, I'm I quit. 
I got to go do, I got to go sell cars or something. No, no, you can't. I'm doing what God called me to do. That. I, but number one, I don't entertain those thoughts because this, I'm doing what God called me to do. But, but, I've just, but I understand enough that I know where my strength comes from. And I know if I'm getting a little, if I'm even feeling like I'm getting to that point, I, you better pull up and get some gas. <laughs> you better get under the spout. Right? So we overcome our limitations in God. I'm talking about those we- that weariness, the tiredness. How do we overcome it? In God. Be strong, how? In the Lord. Who's going to give us the strength that we need? God's going to, but how are we going to get it? We got to pull up. We got to just come on, get in church, wait on the Lord, get up in the morning a little bit and say, man, I need an extra 30 minutes just to, just to praise the Lord, just wait in his presence a little bit. Lord, I just need a good word from heaven. You understand what I'm saying? And when you fellowship with God, what happens is the characteristics and the personality of the Holy Spirit will begin to come alive on the inside of you. That strength, something just wells up on the inside of you, and, and, you, and you get strengthened and with might in your inner man, and, and you're just about you ready to slap that stuff now. I can, I can do this. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody say all things. And what happens when you get strengthened, when that happens, instead of hitting a wall, guess what? You knock the wall down. Remember what David said in Psalm 18? The Lord is the one who lights my candle. What happens when your candle gets lit? I can run through a troop and leap over the wall. A lot of people look like they hit the wall. But the church is called to knock some walls down. We're to knock some stuff down. Knocking some stuff down. And it begins, it begins in your home first. It's going to be hard to knock some, you know, get, get involved in knocking some church stuff down with, with the, with the, with the corporate group when, you, when you're having a hard time you know, just getting through that wet paper bag at home. All right? So, like I said, you know, James says, don't deceive yourselves. It's the doer of the word. Waiting. Let me wind this down. Sometimes people think, well, I'm, I just, you know, I, I get excited, you know, I get around other people, and I get, no, that's really not excitement. You, you know, there's a difference between excitement, soulish excitement, and, and a force that's down on the inside of you. Because what happens, somebody, well, I'm excited about the Lord. Remember, the Bible says they receive things with, with joy, but then after a little while, they quit. What happens is, is people get excited, and then the first, uh, first trial that comes up or, or that first circumstance, it takes that, ex- it took the excitement away. For example, you know, you, were, you was all excited going home after church, and you ordered a hamburger, and you got home, and you asked for no onions, and they was all full of onions. <laughs> and now, now all that excitement's all gone. See, no, you got a force. The force, the force on the inside is different from just being excited. Hallelujah. I don't want to be excited from a soul standpoint. I, we, we want to be challenged, right? It's time to carry a force. It's time, it's time for something to flow out of us besides heartburn. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that one in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand up. Praise the Lord. You get enough tonight. Everybody say, thank God I'm redeemed from heartburn. Praise the Lord. And stay away from those onions. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time for the Spirit of God to have His way in fullness. In the Spirit of might. Everybody say, the Spirit of might. To where you, it, you, you're living this way. Hallelujah. It's, it's thinking about, you know, the, we don't have the option of living, uh, living naked and undressed. You know, we have armor to put on. Hallelujah. We can't afford to go one day without that. It's a daily thing that we're going on. I mean, I, I think about, you know, going into a... Because we get... It's like when I, go on a, when I go to these other countries, you go into a third world country. Some of you guys have been to, you know, go to Honduras. You know what I'm talking about. When you, when you get there, it's a different world. And so because you're in a different world, you're more aware all the time. Man, I, I, man you, I mean, you, you're trying to use your faith on what to eat, what not to eat. I mean, it's, it's like, man, you're just, so, so in, being in a different world like that, your faith is in, on high level. You're, man, you're, you're just keeping your faith up there. And, and, and then here we get home, and we're just, we're, we kind of get comfortable, and everything kind of drops, and we got the options. And so we're, we got to you keep using. That's why you got to challenge yourself when you're comfortable or whatever that I'm going to keep stretching because it's easy to stay there, but you keep stretching. we got to be clothed with glory and light and power and, and uh, hallelujah. 
when we're seeking God and His glory and doing things for His glory, what happens is with His glory comes the power, and with His power comes the might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, that's enough for now. Praise God. Amen. Did you learn something tonight? You learned you got to get past the rollades, the tums. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to heaven and say, thank you, Lord, for the spirit of might operating in my life. Today's a new day. I am an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not of this world. Hallelujah. I carry a force. I carry a substance that comes from Almighty God. Hallelujah. How, and I rule and I reign in life through Christ. Come on, we're reigning in this life right now. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Man, you start with your body. You start with your mind ruling and reigning right there. Hallelujah. Your home. Hallelujah. You're taking authority. Hallelujah. Start ruling and your sphere, your influence, walking into an office. You just walk into your office. You got problems, you got situations, you got, you got goofed up people in your office or wherever you work around. You can just walk in under your breath and say, devil, I bind you right now in the name of There's a new sheriff in town. He just woke up. All right. <laughs> I know, I got you now. I know what's going on here. I got it. I got it. All right. Now I bind you. You're not operating around here. Praise the Lord. Hospitals, wherever you're at. Uh, not my floor. Uh-uh. No, mm -mm. hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You believe this? Hallelujah. Say it again. I'm not of this world. Man, just let that sink down real, down real good. Hallelujah. I'm not of this world. Hallelujah. That'll, that'll just make you think a little differently. Hallelujah. I'm not of this world. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you tonight for healthy bodies in this place. Lord, we just thank you right now. We come against and we bind any spirits of infirmity trying to operate and attack bodies right now in this church. We thank you, Lord. This church, this church is free. This church is a healed church. Hallelujah. We walk in the freedom and the liberty of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we thank you, Lord, for healthy bodies, strong bodies. Hallelujah. Strong minds. We have strong, firm, and stable thoughts, and we walk in the victory Hallelujah, that comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're not shy about it. We're bold about it. Thank you for boldness on the church, Lord. Boldness. And we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for showing us some things that we need to kick out, not do, things maybe we start, we start living with or camping out with. Thank you, Lord. We'll apply this to our own life. Thank you, Lord. We're not going to settle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're thinking the thoughts of Christ, the mind of Christ. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Well, you glad you came tonight? Well, love on those around you before you go. You're dismissed. Have a blessed night, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for watching online. You're dismissed.